and yes, because the number's going up, because growth in South Africa does not translate into jobs, and we've got to be able to do something different. We've got to be able to work as a collective to make those jobs happen in the absence of GDP growth. And you know what? It's a chicken and egg. If we do get young people into work and make them economically active, if those salaries are spent in low-income communities, it is one of the biggest drivers of GDP growth. Some research tells us that if you have a 5% drop in unemployment and those salaries are spent at community level, there's a direct translation into community growth and the money circulating. It translates to a 1% growth in GDP. That is a powerful set of numbers. So if you help us drop that unemployment rate, it is the best way to drive GDP growth because we include more people in the economy. And if you want this from a transactional, hardcore business sense, everybody in this room is a personal income taxpayer in this country. This is not a sustainable situation where only 3% of our population contribute to 80% of personal income tax. That is not sustainable. We need more taxpayers. We need inclusion. So that's why. Okay. So the how of yes, how do we drive youth employability? How are we going to do this as a collective? The innovation frontiers that you will see yes working on, block one is a tick. The gazette is out uh, in partnership with labor, government, in particular the DTI. We're very grateful for the flexibility and innovative mindset that they've applied to yes. Um, the Gazette's published, the practice note is published. Demand side, job creation. So we're working with a lot of entities to build new jobs at community level. A whole host of partners are helping us to do that. And on the supply side, there's a lot of work being done on delivering to youth content, smartphones, digitally delivered work readiness training, assistance on building a growth mindset, soft skill sets, which we know are probably one of the biggest influences of success of a young person in a job. And we're digitally delivering this. We've got amazing partners like the World Bank. We've got people working on frontier research from around the world, working on this technical partnership with us. In fact, we have a Spanish behavioral economist sitting at our office now, and she's going to be there for the next year. We ask you to be patient with us. We only were cash flow positive a month and a half ago. So we're building and we're iterating and we're learning how to get better and better. And we'll do that with you. So this is a summary. We're about new places, spaces, faces, industries, and new career pathways. So for the BE benefit, and I think a lot of you are here to understand more about this, you have to have black youth. They have to be between 18 and 35 years of age. You need to hit your yes target number, which is what you calculate with the formula that is in the Gazette. And it's about a one-year work experience for these black youth. Okay, That's who we're talking about. We've discussed the importance of a one-year experience because what we know is that a CV and a reference letter, again, this is peer-reviewed academic research, it's published, is three times more likely that a young person will get a callback if they have the CV and reference letter. And for women, this is an incredible amplification of this effect. What this means is that people would actually rather hire women. Good choice, those of you that. <laughs> if you have a CV and reference letter for a woman, it doubles the likelihood of a job within three months. That's powerful stuff, guys. Okay? And that's what you can do just by delivering that one year. So what do you do as a company? You register with yes. And you make some choices. Uh, am I a small business or am I a big business? This is the 50 million turnover is that cutoff point. And you decide where you fit and you select your package based on that. Am I doing this for BEE or not for BEE? Believe it or not, a lot of people just want to be part of the movement. And it's not about the level up on the scorecard. So we have a certain percentage of yes registrations that are doing this not for BE. And then the third block, am I putting these youth inside my company 
what we call an internal placement, or am I doing this outside my company, what we call an external placement. So these are the big choices that you'll need to make up front. What type of business am I? Am I doing it for BE? And where will I place my youth? Now, we have three delivery channels for you to be able to place youth. So there's a lot of flexibility here. I can put them in my business. I can host them in an existing supply chain program I have, in an SME, in an NGO. We love social jobs. So we love the programs that put youth into early childhood development training and teaching programs. We love Namza, Project Namzamo. Johnson & Johnson is here, who've received their level up. They've got community health workers, which drives a lot of what they're trying to do outside of the company. So you can strategically line up those jobs in market with your business. Or you can put them into a social job around some project that your company is interested in. And you can parcel it out. So if you've got a target of 3,360, for example, you can say, well, I'll put a, I've got space for 100 inside of my company, and I'll put 2,260 in a range of hosts out there. So YES has got an implementation partner model. We've got quite a, a, a rigorous uh, deck, which companies that want to be implementation partners have to fill out. This is just to ensure that when youth are placed in market, they're protected um, and they're in good work experiences. So if a company has filled out this implementation partner template, we put them on a menu. And when we go to companies, we say, if you can't do these internally, here's a host of partners we have that will gladly manage the recruitment and placement of youth in community for you.